If there is one consuming passion in this country, it is with cars. If there is one consuming passion in Italy, it is with cars. If there is truly a dream car to satisfy those passions, the name it bears is this, Lamborghini. Being a dream, it is, of course, utterly impractical. Price about 120000 space, two seats, no trunk. If this story looks like a commercial, well, no harm done. They can only make about 300 a year, and you might have to wait two years to get one. A vineyard in central Italy. A 70-year-old gentleman farmer who still gets a thrill from tending his own vines. The end of another day. Time to put away the tractor and let the other thrills begin. His name is Ferruccio Lamborghini. The tractor he was driving was a Lamborghini. The car he is driving is a Lamborghini. The speed he is going is pure Lamborghini. Signor Lamborghini no longer owns the company that bears his name. It was lost to a business group after he ran into financial difficulties. But he is the father of this model. He got into the car business in 1963, having become dissatisfied with the best of Italian high-performance cars. Watch this red one perform, and you will understand why he is now satisfied. We do not advise anyone to drive at these speeds on public roads. Valentino Balboni, the test driver, is licensed to do it and does it brilliantly. Brakes are just something. Yeah, yeah. The company does not have a test track. Our cars are built for the road, it says. It's a thrilling ride, I must say. The broken lines fly by like tracer bullets, or get eaten up like some supersonic Pac-Man. This is no special effect. This is 180 miles an hour. You find it relaxing? Yes, yes. With this car, yes. Sixteen years ago, Lamborghini, with a team of engineers, designed and began to build his ultimate road car. It remains today the fastest production car available. 180, even 195 miles an hour. And about the most expensive about $120,000. When it was unveiled in the early 70s, it had no name, but a local reporter took one look and said, Kuntash, which translates loosely as, holy cow, and the name stuck. Some vital statistics for the true car fanatic. The engine has 12 cylinders, each of them with four valves. It develops almost 500 horsepower. The rear tires are almost 14 inches wide. The brakes are enormous vented discs that aren't as stopping what those 12 cylinders are to moving. The gearbox has five speeds. You would normally shift into fifth at about 140 miles an hour. And from a standing start to 30 seconds later, you are closer to 200 miles an hour than to 100 miles an hour. The Lamborghini factory in Sant'Agata is, despite the futuristic look of the car, an oasis of old-fashioned artisanship. The Countach barely uses any bought-in subcontracted parts. Everything from engine block to gearbox is made right here, and most things made by hand, just like a good suit. There are no robots, only people, who began their careers as teenage apprentices. The place is as clean as a surgery, and the machine as thoroughly tested as a fighter plane. All of which means that peak production is three cars a week. The waiting list for one is more than a year. Is this the Lamborghini Countach for everyone, for every driver? 
to everyone who can afford it? No. I think uh, it's uh, a special car for special people. Daniela Adetto is the marketing director for the Countach. Is there such a thing as a typical Lamborghini purchaser, a typical owner? Yes, very large ego. Because uh, if you're shy, you cannot go around with this car. It's like to go out uh, in the evening that is with a beautiful uh, woman. Not everybody can afford, not because they don't have enough money or because they have enough power, but because they are uh, not the type that like to go out with a very beautiful woman. Because, uh, you know, this white car is like a beautiful virgin. If you see the red, it's like a mature woman. If you see the black one, it's like uh, an intriguing uh, woman, you know? What are its weaknesses? The weakness is that it's not a very comfortable car, of course. You cannot go with uh, uh, baggages, etc. You must have another car, like a Rolls Royce that follow you with a chauffeur and arrive the day later, the day after, with all the baggages. And of course, you cannot go with children. Or you, you must have only a beautiful woman, and that's it. Even now, 16 years after it was launched, it still regularly makes the covers of the motoring magazines. Probably the most written about car ever built, possibly overwritten about. For example, devastatingly defiant in looks. Just light the fuse and keep steering. Uncompromisingly arrogant. Another writer says, like tasting beer for the first time or losing one's virginity, Seeing a Countach is an experience never forgotten. Another writer. Here we are talking about the brutal throb of a predator, the same that vibrates in a cheetah waiting to pounce on a gazelle. It is hard to find anyone to question the value of the Countach. Even David Davis, editor and publisher of Automobile Magazine and one of America's toughest car critics, is smitten. It's probably overpriced. Yeah, Hemingway said that pheasant shooting was worth whatever you had to pay for it. And I think that's probably true with Lamborghini driving, too. There's no trunk space. None whatsoever. The visit and, and, and what trunk space there is is immensely hot. It would not be a place to carry a box of chocolates. Uh, why do people buy it? Well, it's, a, it's the ultimate sort of outlaw statement, isn't it? It's uh, in a time when, you know, we've got uh, the, the Center for Automotive Safety and all of those people on one side and the Baptists on the other trying to sort of corral us and make us behave the way we're supposed to. You can very quickly establish yourself as being somewhere else just by parking one of those in front of your house. It's, uh, it's a car that would just frighten you to death if you had the slightest doubt of your ability to drive it. I mean, to, to suddenly you have somebody throw you the keys and say, would you mind driving my car home and walk out into a dark parking lot and see this thing sort of glowering at you, you would call a taxi, you'd do almost anything, I'd bring in an airlift, but you certainly wouldn't want to jump into it and drive it. The whole idea, the whole environment that's created by that car on a given stretch of road is just that's another matter altogether. You can't accomplish that in a, in a Buick Roadmaster. As you may have already noticed, this car is not for everyone. The doors are a wondrous piece of engineering, but getting in can require a certain degree of agility. The windows open to mere slits through which you can't even toss a token into a toll booth. As for the rear window, if you can call it that, Forget reversing without the aid of someone to direct you. Or do what the test drivers do. Heads up, bottoms up. If you can live without those little compromises to comfort and safety and have the cash, you might just fall in love with this little number. One writer says, it is not what the Kuntash can do for you that counts, but what it does to others. <laughs> That is certainly true. Anywhere the Countach goes, it stops traffic dead. Even right here in Santa Agata, where the car is built, the presence of one is an event. Or the streets of Manhattan, even the most jaded people on earth stop and gawk with respect and envy and awe. I love this car, man, I love this car. And 
misinformation. Oh, shit, you got a jacuzzi in the back. Yeah? You see that red button over there? It says eject. But you eject the other way, you know, for you. Yo, fellas, anybody want to take a ride? The keys are in it. No, the guy must not know New York too well, man, to be leaving keys in the back of the car. He can do that, It is the toy for the man who has everything. So, of course, the man who does have everything, the millionaire publisher, balloonist, oldest and richest hell's angel on earth, Malcolm Forbes, has one. How do New Yorkers respond to it when you bring it into town? They respond the same way you and I would if we saw one. They stop, they whistle. Cars pull up beside you, and whether they're in a Cadillac or an old uh, um, uh, pickup truck, they whistle. They roll the window down. They say, what's the name of this car? How much? Uh, you know, and you go by and you get a toot from other cars and they give you the, the sign. Isn't it great? Uh, everybody shares enthusiasm for the car. People don't resent it like they do, say, a stretch limousine that takes 10 minutes to get around the corner and the tinted dark glasses, all, you know, all the crap. There's, not nothing, there's nothing junky about this. There's nothing put on about it. It's pure. I firmly believe that everyone uh, who is worth anything at all should own a 12-cylinder car before they die, because there's nothing else like it. It's just one of the great operatic experiences of all time. It's a real noise, and there's nothing else like it. It'll take your breath away. This machine makes no practical sense whatsoever, but it's more than just status symbol. Not a jewel to be stroked and admired, it's a tool to be used, and when properly used, it connects the driver to a great Italian tradition of technology and design. It brings out the Italian in us.